It's actually been over a year since I've shown you what I've been carrying around in my everyday tech bag and quite a lot has changed since then. I've got a new bag, some new camera equipment and a bunch of other new things that I take around with me that I wanted to show you. So without any further ado, I think we should just get straight into it. Let's start with the bag itself first. This is the Wandered Provoke 21 litre in this kind of stealth black look, which I really like. And it actually took me a really long time to find this once I decided this was the bag I want. In the middle kind of, of the pandemic, it was really difficult to kind of get camera bags for some reason. So I ended up getting this one from America from Moments Store and they had one in stock, so that was where I managed to get one from. Honestly, this bag feels like it's got a space for absolutely everything you could possibly dream of bringing with you, and it's modular too, which is really nice. The bag comes alone, but you can add these camera cubes to it if you want to, which turn it into a fully-fledged camera bag. I've got the essential camera cube, which is enough for all the equipment I need, but you can get really big ones or even smaller ones, and the bag kind of works with it as well. Also, one of my favorite features of this bag is just the amount of kind of secret little hidden pockets. They're all over this bag and they're really good places to tuck away little things. For instance, one of the first things I did with this bag is to put an air tag in one of the hidden pockets on the side, which is where I think where you're supposed to put your keys or something. But for me, that's kind of where I put this air tag. So that's a really great little feature. One of my absolute favorite features of this bag though is this handle on top, which is not only really useful anyway, but it's also magnetic. So it just kind of snaps together like that super useful i think this is the second version of this bag and i'm not sure it was there on the first version but yeah super nice and it just kind of adds that kind of quality feel to the whole thing so that's the bag it's nice and stealthy i always had this idea that keeping things stealthy was kind of like a good idea for camera bags and stuff but now that i know so much about camera bags i can spot a camera bag at you know 100 meter distance so anyway this is one i've got and i've been really enjoying it so far I always pack a water bottle with me whenever I do head out, especially if it's for the entire day. And I've honestly been through so many of them. It would shock you if you knew how much I've spent on these over the years. So when Lark reached out to sponsor a video and they had this color of water bottle, well, I couldn't resist. The two bottles I have here from Lark are the filtered and the pure Viz versions. The bottle filtered has a built-in, easily replaceable Nano Zero filter within the cap itself, which removes contaminants such as lead, heavy metals, and chlorine, and it contains a straw for easy drinking. The next one is the pure Viz version, which is the one I've been using for around a month now. This uses UVC like technology to purify your water, and it's all done in a single press of the button on top. This takes 60 seconds, or there's an even longer three minute adventure mode version, which makes it around 10,000 times more hygienic. It also removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria while it's at it too, making it perfect for the outdoors. You can swap out the caps too, so if you wanted to, you could use the pure viz first to kill the bacteria, and then the filter to remove everything else. Also, the caps are available to buy separately as well, so you don't end up with loads of bottles. There's a variety of colors to choose from, but this Seaside Mint is my favorite by far, and they can keep your drink cool for up to 24 hours. So if you do want to check these out, I'll leave a link to them in the description below, and a huge thank you goes out to Lark. First off, the thing I always pack is my computers and I'll either take one of these or both of them depending on the day. But first up is the iPad Air and I've got this with the Apple Magic Keyboard, which actually took me a really long time to enjoy. I knew a lot of people really love this keyboard, but it took me a long time to get there. But now that I am using it a lot, I do really like it. And of course, I've got the Apple Pencil on there too, which I think is an essential accessory. On the back there, I've got the new Kuroku stickers. So there's the new logo and there's one of the Pocky stickers, which is really cute. I'll link those below if you want to check them out. But that slides into the back portion of the backpack, which is this really nice sort of organizer thing. And there's also a second slot in there too, which is really ideal for the MacBook Pro. Now this MacBook Pro is from 2019. It's the kind of 16 inch model. And I've really, really enjoyed using this laptop. I was going to upgrade to the M1 stuff, the M1 Pro, but it turned out that computer wasn't really ideal for me. And I've got a video on why, so I'll link that up here if you want to check it out. But it does everything I need it to do and it still does it pretty well. Like I say, if I'm having a heavier day where I know I'll need Photoshop or I know I'll be editing loads and loads of photos or any video at all, I'll always choose my MacBook to do that over on the iPad. Pad. but if it's going to be a lighter day sometimes I can just get away with taking the iPad which is really really great because it's so much more portable. Despite this laptop being quite big at 16 inches it actually slides really nicely into the backpack on the second larger pocket on the back organizer 
And to be honest, it's really been great. I think I'm gonna hold off to see what happens with the M2 Pro before I upgrade it. But honestly, I don't really need to, and that's why I haven't. It's been a really great laptop. Secondly, the thing that's going in my bag all the time, and it's my most recent purchase, and my newest thing on this whole entire list, is this heavily modded Game Boy Pocket. And this thing is an absolute pleasure. I really wanted one of those analog pockets, and I saw the hype and I was all up for it. And then the delivery dates on those things are absolutely in the same. And I saw something similar with the Playdate, which is another handheld system. But really, I wanted kind of that nostalgia hit that I've been waiting for and I always wanted one of these see-through colorways when I was younger so I finally bit the bullet recently and picked up this one. It's the Famitsu version with 1997 on the front and it just looks absolutely stunning. I can't believe how nice this was when it turned up and I'm just starting to play through Pokemon Silver again because not only does it match it but it also is one of my favorite games from that era. So that's the second thing I'm taking around with me everywhere. I don't have a case for it yet. I've just got this really kind of small little bag that it fits into quite nicely and that just goes into the main pocket on my bag too. So the next thing I pack and take with me pretty much everywhere are the Apple AirPods Pro and these honestly have been such a staple since I bought them. When I did get them over a couple of years ago now I thought they were such an extravagance but they really quickly worked into my everyday life and I pretty much use these every day. I'm not a huge fan of over-ear headphones. As you probably know I wear a hat a lot so over-ear headphones just kind of don't sit quite right for me. And the AirPods Pro have just been so, so good. The noise cancelling is excellent. They work with iPhone kind of flawlessly, and it's just that simple setup, super easy to use, and they sound great too. So AirPods Pro, these actually don't go in the main pocket. They go in one of the secret pockets I mentioned earlier at the top, and they're just a fantastic set of earbuds. And honestly, I wouldn't go anywhere without these. Another thing which goes into the main pocket on this bag is this Native Union Stow Organizer. I bought this because I really wanted a better way to hold all my cables and that sort of thing and it was quite expensive for what it is but it's actually been a really good way to keep everything a bit more organized within the bag. The first thing that goes into there is this 100 watt GAN charger from Ugreen. This is 100 watts and the really great thing about it is how many ports it's got on it. I've been using the Apple MacBook charger for pretty much all of my charging needs recently but it's only got one USB-C out and this has got three USB-Cs and a USB-A so I can charge pretty much everything from here and it's super small doesn't take up too much space at all. This next one I'm really really fond of and I really really like it. This is from Satechi. This is an Apple Watch charger which is absolutely tiny and it honestly is one of the coolest little gadgets I've used in a while. It's really simple, it's just an Apple Watch charger with a single USB-C and it just plops straight into either your MacBook or your iPad or into the wall and you can top your watch up. Next up into this little stove organizer is my Kingston SSD. This is two terabytes and it's 2000 megabits per second or something like that. Ultra fast, ultra nice. It's been really great actually and I've been using it for all of my kind of larger video projects that I don't want to keep hanging around on my MacBook hard drive. I back up all my photos and videos to this when I am on a shoot, which is less so much now, but it's a great little drive and it's tiny as well. So that one goes right into the stove organizer too. This next one is actually from Kingston as well. This is the Nucleum USB-C adapter. I've been using this for ages and you may have seen it in loads of previous videos. It's just a decent USB-C adapter and because I'm still using the older MacBook Pro, I'm still living that USB-C life. So this is one thing I always pack with me and that goes into the organizer as well. And finally, even though I'm a huge note taker on the iPad, I still always take a little notebook with me and a pen. This notebook is from our store Kuroku and it's just got a nice design on the front and I use it just in case we kind of need something really quickly or we need to write something down or maybe the iPad runs out of battery and I'm in a pinch but always take these with me those go into the stove organizer as well as for pens I always use the same ones which come from Muji really like these they're nice kind of smooth gel pens and they're really nice to write with not that my handwriting is any good Next up is something that I've been wanting for a really long time and I finally bit the bullet and bought it not too long ago is the Fujifilm X-E4. Now for client work and for all of my YouTube work I use my Sony a7 IV which is what I'm filming on right now but this Fujifilm X-E4 is what I bought for having more kind of fun with photography. I find when I take my Sony out with me everywhere it feels like I'm on a shoot or something like that. I did have an X100V but it turned out that the focal length of 35mm for me just wasn't any good so 
I went with the X-E4 and I picked up the 35mm lens, which is a 50mm equivalent, and it's been so nice to use. I'm taking this on shorter trips when we go to cities, like to London or something, just to have something better than my iPhone to take really nice photos on. I picked up two lenses. I've got the one that's attached, and I also got the 15-45, to which is a really cheap lens, but to get 15mm on the wide end at that price is ridiculously good, so I had to go for that too. And the Fujifilm X-E4 just produces such beautiful photos out of camera. One of the things I wanted with this is to not touch anything, just to take photos for fun and not have to edit them or anything like that. And that's what it's delivered so far. I've got a little thumb grip on it as well, which makes it a bit easier to use. And it's just a really beautiful little piece of kit. And I just really, really enjoy using it. To round things off in that bag, another thing I mentioned at the start of this video is how many secret kind of little cubby hole pockets this bag has got. And one of the things I always take with me is the AirTag, which I talked about before. But another thing I take with me, and this is really important, I think if you're a photographer or a creative of any kind, is I actually leave an SD card in there, a really old one. I tuck it away in there in a little protective case. And that means if I ever go out on a shoot and I for some reason forget to pack a memory card, I've always got my bag card ready to go if I ever need it. Hopefully the idea is I don't touch it and I never need it, but for those times when I do need it, it's just there and I can grab it and start shooting straight away. Another thing I keep in the little secret pockets on the other side of the bag is a couple of business cards. I've talked about business cards before, but I think it's really important to have a couple with you wherever you are, even if it is just your normal contact information or if someone wants to know who you are and what you do. Having a couple of those is just really, really useful. And it's a nice touch to be able to give someone a card rather than to just kind of awkwardly give you their number. It's a really nice little thing to do and I absolutely love it. Finally, and this isn't a bag item, it's more of an everyday carry item, is my phone and I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This phone honestly has been such a wonderful phone to use. The battery life is absolutely epic. It's got a great camera, it's got a great screen. It's kind of everything you could kind of hope for in an iPhone at the moment. Sure, the notch is pretty huge and it's not perfect. I wish I had USB-C, but you know, six months, eight months on or whatever, it's been so fantastic and Honestly, I think Apple really nailed it with this one. There's so much to like about this phone, and to be honest, I can't see me ever switching back to Android now. All in all, that rounds up everything I take with me in my bag when I'm going out for something kind of heavily tech-related or on any sort of camera shoots. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, pop a like, and let me know which bag you're using in the comments below. I always love to know what you're using and how you use it and all that sort of thing. And subscribe too, and I will see you all in the next one.